Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to set that status bar color on the top of your iOS Android applications with Xamarin Forms in just a few lines of code, so tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James Montemagno. I'm back with another Xamarin 101 video right here on my YouTube channel. If you're brand new to the series, check out them right here because I've 15, 20 some odd videos at this point, starting from a file new project all the way at some point releasing the app onto the app store. We've been using Xamarin Forms features all the way through to build out an awesome coffee application. And what we're really working on today is fine tuning our styles of our applications. I put out a video a week or two ago about theming, light and dark theme and custom themes of our applications. Then I got a few questions, which is, what about the navigation bar? What about that status bar up there, which you know you wanna kind of control the color of? Well, it's a great question, and I'm glad that a lot of you asked in the comments. So I figured I would just go ahead and sort of just walk through it and show how to update those different status bar colors. So let's take a look. All right, so the very first thing I want to do is bring up the application here. And um, what we're gonna see is that this is my coffee application. It has a nice uh, way of doing light theme and dark theme, as we can see as I toggle through. But the biggest thing is this navigation bar and this dark color right here, right? It's kind of like they don't change at all, you know? And a lot of applications today actually have the entire colors all the way through the top navigation bar. It's sort of seamless. It's really nice, and, then, and I really, really like it. So what we're going to do is we're going to adjust these, this sort of title navigation bar and the status bar color. So what I'm gonna do is bring up Visual Studio, and I've brought up my app shell. This is with Xamarin Forms shell. That's how we've created this project. I like it for all the many, many reasons I've said in my previous videos. But the cool part is that it has a bunch of base styles that will help you theme your application. I actually haven't adjusted them at all because we haven't had to yet until now. But what we see here is inside the file new template, we have a background color, a foreground color, a title color, a disabled color, an unselected color, and then tab bar colors, which is actually quite cool. In fact, if you go down further in the flyout template, you'll see that there's colors that you can specify when um, these flyout items are selected and deselected. So you can really fine tune what it looks like at any time. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and note that the background color right here is set to this primary blue, and the foreground color is set to the white. So let's go ahead and adjust that. Okay. Instead of setting a primary color, we're gonna go ahead and use an app theme binding here, which is quite cool. You can use a dynamic resource if you're doing custom theming with different colors, but here we're just using a dark theme and a light theme um, for this application. So here for the app theme binding, I'm gonna say when dark mode, use black, um, else when it's light, use white. Pretty straightforward. Then for the foreground color, which is the text color here, we're gonna swap it. We're gonna say, use white text basically when it is in that mode, else use black. Let's just go ahead and restart this since we're making some changes to our app shell up on top. And what we should see right away is that we no longer have that static primary blue color for our navigation bar. In fact, what we should have now, because the default is this dark theme, is that we should see black. There it is. If I come in here and I go ahead and swap this over, boom, there it is. Automatically for us 100%. So it's actually really simple. I mean, change two lines of code and the video's done. No, almost, <laughs> almost. So this is nice. And of course, like I said, you can adjust this based on your if you're using tabs or other things to be really dynamic. So you want to definitely check those out as you're going. For us, we only need to adjust those colors, so that's quite nice. But what about this thing up here, right? What about this status bar? Well, one thing you'll note is if you go into your Android project, resources, values, styles, Android has a base theme itself, and Xamarin Forms has its own, so it comments everything out because it does it for us. But if we wanted to have a default here, we could uncomment the color primary dark. That is the Android resource that controls this status bar color. So here I could say use black, for example, and then now we would have a black one on top for our status bar. But what about dynamic? Because this actually 
it isn't going to be dynamic at all because if I reformat it, it'll just be black all the time. Well, we need to write a little bit of code, unfortunately, to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come into our app coffee over here and I'm going to say add new item and I'm going to say interface I environment. Okay. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video about dependency injection, I'm going to put a thing right up there. Definitely check that out because that's what we're going to do here is we need to tap into some Android specific code. I'm going to have one method here that'll say, uh, void set status bar color. It's going to take in a color and a Boolean, which is dark status bar tint. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell us if we want to tint the icons and the text in a dark or a light. Okay. Here for the color, we're going to use system drawing color. Um, Xamarin forms color is a system drawing color, but you'll see it makes it a little bit easier to convert it into an Android color here in a second. So there's our color. Now all we got to do is implement this puppy over in our main activity in our Android project. So over here, Android project main activity. So we're going to create a new class. You could of course put this in a new file, but I am being a lazy. <laughs> so I'm going to call this environment implements. I environment. environment. There we go. And here I'm going to go ahead and use that implement our interface. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and add another dependency up top for environment. Now I added this in my main activity and it needs me to specify that it's my environment to export, not the Android environment to export. So let's do that. All right, cool. So now at this point, um, we have our methods set up here. We have our status bar and our Boolean, everything inside of here. We just need to implement it. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some code. I know you're saying, Oh, James, just copy and paste code. Oh no. Oh, why'd you do that? Well, because I've built this code up years ago in a lot of my applications on my live stream on Twitch and my Apple, my other applications. And I just copy and paste it around and I probably should put it in a NuGet to be honest with you, but it's just a very simple way of theming the status bar. And let me walk you through it. Okay. The first thing that you do here is you check the build version SDK int and make sure that it is at least running lollipop or greater. If it's not, then just return because it doesn't support these APIs. Then over here, we're going to grab the current activity and the current window. So the current activity is from Xamarin essentials. And then the window is on top of that. Now, what we need to do is we need to set that status bar color. And we're able to do that here with window dot set it status bar color, which is quite nice. I literally named it the same here. It is going to take in an Android graphics color and to convert system drawing color into the Android color. We have an extension method in Xamarin essentials to do that. So I just say to platform color and it adjusts it. But before I do that, I need to tell the window that I am going to be drawing the system backgrounds and we're going to clear out the current status on it, which is translucent. Our, yeah, I don't actually remember what these things do. All I know is are required in setting this out. So it's a way of adding a flag and then clearing the existing flags to say, Hey, don't use whatever the current translucent is use mine. Then we have one more, which is only available on Android M or greater, which is setting that shade for the text. Okay. And this enables us to set, Hey, use white text or dark text. And it's not quite the same as setting a color. What we actually do is set the system UI visibility. It's re really strange, but what I do is you can set it over here to a light status bar color. If you want it to be light, um, or you set it to zero, which is dark. So what I do is I say, let's find that flag and then set the window decor view dot system UI visibility. If it's dark, if we want it to be um, a dark tint, then set the light status bar else clear it out. Okay which is a way of, of doing this. So that's a way of thinking about it there. Now you'll notice that this thing is deprecated technically system UI visibility. I haven't had any issues with it, with the system decor system UI visibility, but you know, maybe in the future, this will go away and we'll have to look for some updated code, but I haven't had any issues at all. I'm running on our emulators should be good. All right. So now we need to use this thing. So again, I recommend checking out that theme video. 
um, previously because I had this the theme and it, there's a method called set theme over here. And what that enables me to do is come in and actually access some of this code. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come in and we're going to say um, bop, 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 via var e equals dependency service dot get i environment and grab that environment. So again, from our dependency service, grab it. Now we didn't implement this on iOS or if we had Windows, it wouldn't be there either. So we'll have to check against so null. But what I'll do here is I'll say if, all right, and app.current dot requested theme. All right. Notice previously we were setting the user theme. This will inherently set the requested theme. So whatever the actual requested theme of the system is, that's what we're going to use. So here I'm going to say if it's dark, then we're going to go and set something else. Don't. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say e question mark dot. So make sure it's not null. Set status bar color. If it's dark, we'll say color dot black. And what we'll do here is we're going to set this to false. So we're going to say, hey, we want you to use a light color over here. All right. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to say, if it's white, use white. So the light theme and set this to true. There we go. It's literally that easy. This method gets called whenever we change the theme or the user changes the theme itself. So we're going to dynamically change this on app startup and specifically when the user changes it or they go into our settings and change it as well. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like over here in the app. You'll notice that there's still a, a black, you know, status bar on here because I would want to implement a splash screen myself and put it on there. But boom, there we go. Look at this. We have our theming there. So it's a light theme right now. So it's white. It's seamlessly trends goes up. Then over here, if I go into dark, boom, there it is. Awesome. I can go into my settings. I can change these over here and look at that. Very, very cool automatically dynamically changes it for us all automatically with just a few lines of code. Now you may be saying, well, James, you know, I don't use shell. So what if I don't use shell? How does this adjust my theming here? Well, good question. Um, well, there is no app shell <laughs> for you to adjust. You can't do this. There's a few ways of doing uh, the navigation bar. Uh, you could wrap your content pages in a navigation bar and set different properties, different colors. What I like to do in some of my older apps that I'm updating over here, if I don't have shell is come into my, my theme page, call it on every single appearing of a page. And what you can do here is, is you can actually come in and say, um, var nav equals app.current.main page as xamarin.forms.navigation page. Okay. So if you're not using shell, this would work. And then what you can do is you can say if over here nav does not equal null, what you can do is you can say nav.bar background color equals color.black. Okay. And nav dot bar text color equals color dot white be pretty much the same as what we did in our app shell, but here we're just going to do it in code and then flip these colors here. So if you're saying, Hey, I'm not using shell. How does this work? You're going to need to do this here. And in fact, when we get to talking about iOS next, you'll have to set this, make sure these colors are set correctly. And so it works um, with the status bar on iOS because so far we've only done Android, like we saw earlier. So you may of course now be asking yourself, all right, we have our Android application all set up and absolutely beautiful. How do we make sure that our iOS status bar is themed as well? Do we have to do anything else? So let's head over to our Mac and take a look at that for a small tweak in our application to get it working. So let's head over there now. So let's take a look at the current state of iOS. We've set those foreground and background colors. So if we head over into the settings, what we're going to see is that this actually sort of works really nice. You know, we have light theme, dark theme system, uh, the command shift a, uh, also toggles that appearance there. So you can see it go back and forth, but you'll notice that actually in light mode here, the title is, is not correct. And that's because the title here defaulted to white. So this is something that 
for some reason, you don't have to do on Android, but I did have to do over here. Maybe I did uh, on Android, but you should probably set this is what I'm saying here. So make sure you set that title color. That's the same as the back or the bar text color um, if you're doing this with a navigation page. So you want to make sure you set that. So let's go ahead and redeploy this. And now hopefully our entire title bar and the titles and everything should work accordingly. So here we go. Let's go back over into settings so we can toggle the three. Oh, there it is. Perfect settings with the black text and white text. You can go ahead and modify that yourself. But notice that, yeah, see, you can't see that system status bar anymore. It, it's actually automatically adjusting, but on one of the modes, it's not setting it correctly. Uh, and this is because the system's trying to be smart about it, but we need to tell it what to use, just like we did on Android. First thing you need to do is set this view controller based status up status appearance to false or no in the info P list. Then we're going to implement the status, um, you know, interface, just like we did over on Android. Now, again, I don't think that I probably should have named this environment or I environment because it's actually not the best name and there's a system dot environment and you just name it whatever you want really at the end of the day. But for some reason I went with system environment. I'm going to bring in a few namespaces here, Xamarin Forms and Xamarin Essentials, because we're going to use that in our iOS code. So very minimal code here. We'll do that assembly dependency export, just like I did on Android. And we'll do the, you know, very specific mycoffeeapp.ios.environment that will bring it in. And that's because, you know, like I said earlier, if I didn't bring in that namespace, system.environment would, would come up and that would be no good. So I'm going to copy and paste in some code. Don't worry. Ah, James is copying and pasting code again. Uh, in fact, we don't need some of this code, but it's actually three lines of code. So what we do on this set status bar color is we detect if we want dark status content or not. And if so, we're going to use this UI status bar color style or whatever, dark content or light content. Then we're going to set the status bar style with the UI application shared application. And you can set animation true or false. Xamarin Essentials includes a get current UI view controller. And then as long as it's not null, you can do sets need status bar appearance update, and that will trigger it. That, that's all you need to do actually. So three lines of code, it's, it's much more elegant than it is over on Android. So you're able to really finesse this. And of course you probably want to check the platform version number too, to make sure that it's uh, iOS 12 or whatever, whenever dark mode was introduced. So let's go ahead into settings, light mode, dark mode. Whoa, it works. Light mode system toggles back and forth again. Can, can the command shift a light mode, dark mode. So all the modes work and we can see the status bar everywhere. Yay. Of course you could modify that uh, as well. If you wanted to fade in or out. Now this code up here does a few things for you. This allows you to set the status bar color specifically if you want to. So over here, it actually goes and gets the window scene status bar frame. We convert the platform color over else on older versions of iOS, it'll get the status bar background color selector. You know, if you need to set it manually, you can do it there based on your application. The only caveat is that you cannot call this method in the constructor before your UI is there. You need to do it on, on resume. So make sure you do that there. And of course, always invoke on the main thread. All right. Well, there you have it. That is how you get up and running automatically adjusting the navigation bar and status bar colors dynamically for your application. I hope that you found this video super duper helpful. Uh, if you did give it a thumbs up over there and that helps it go into the YouTube algorithm of goodness to recommend to other folks. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. So you stay up to date if you want to, with all the videos I'm putting out here. Finally, I started a new weekly newsletter at newsletter.montemagno.com. You can subscribe. It's free completely. You get weekly updates of me just rambling about stuff in tech, some cool photos of things that I'm experiencing in the universe and also of coffee, which is quite fun. Um, so definitely check that out, but that's going to do it for me this week. So until next time, thanks for watching.